Right, hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Um, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought I'd make a video on it. Ford Transit Custom, usual story. It's been back and forward to various garages, and it's had, each time it went to each garage, it's had a fourth regen and sent on its way. Then it's been back to another garage, they've done a fourth regen and put a DPF pressure sensor in it. Then it's been to another one, and they've done a fourth regen and put an additive in the tank. Uh, of course, all of these scenarios each time default has come back within a couple of days. Um, so he's brought it down to me to have a look. He did have a look at my videos and he's he sort of gathered himself that it might be the vaporizer, but uh, he's finding it difficult to get anyone who wants to touch it. So here he is. Right, so this is sort of the invoices that he's got. They're all sort of the same. So DPF treatment in the tank, forced regeneration, and then it's sent on its way, really. So the fault code that we have is P244C-00-2C, dash, uh, um, exhaust temperature too low for particle filter regeneration. Now if you're a, a watcher of my channel, you know what that's going to be. Um, very likely to be the vaporizer. Um, the customer's got his own scan tool and he said he's been watching it and on the way down here it was trying to regen but it was going to about 400 and odd degrees and then it would give up basically and then this code comes up so uh, we can go in and have a look at some live data okay so we have a 98% fill level on the DPF we have a 16 millibars pressure on the DPF as well this is where the issue lies here with the temperature Obviously, I can't show you right now but we're on 110 degrees this should go to 600 to 650 degrees while it's doing a region um, but without the vaporizer working correctly it would only reach sort of maybe 400 if you're lucky um, okay so we need to now get this sorted out uh, so he doesn't go back into limp mode basically he's not in limp mode at the minute obviously he's got he's, he's got a, he's got some sort of scan tool that he's been checking it with himself and maybe clearing the codes so yeah all right we'll go through the repair what I'm gonna do now I know people will ask so this is the think car scan tool Model number is Tinkscan 689BT. I will put the link in the video description where you can buy this tool. Comes with a 10% discount if you add the code Jimmy O'Reilly discount code. But if they're already on sale, the discount code may not work. Um, right, yeah, so that's the tool that I'm using. Link is in the video description. All right, so here we are. It's up on ramps. We're gonna get underneath. Now, this is a little bit more difficult than normal because it's got air conditioning, which makes access a little bit tighter so here's some of the tools i'm bringing under with me it's a blowtorch 22 mil crow's foot spanner it's, a, it's an actual vaporizer tool that one it's, it's designed for these i'm gonna bring this with me as well just because it all depends on what position the sort of vaporizer is in sometimes if you've got to get it here you can't get the spanner on uh flip it around maybe try it like that but one of these tools or maybe a combination of using this one and then this one We'll get it off if I get some heat on it. Do bear in mind, sort of 50% of these will strip the treads when you're coming out, so you might have to use a tread chaser as well. We've got one in the van if we need that. Basically, the, the treads rust up, and then when you try to get them out, they just crumble to pieces, and then you end up not being able to fit a new vaporizer because the treads are gone. And it gets hopefully that doesn't happen because it's really difficult to get them out then as well because the tread, once the tread um disintegrates it 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 makes uh makes it really tight okay so i'm underneath the vehicle here if we go above the subframe and sort of look up there just up there in that location there's your vaporizer it's quite a hard reach it's right up there but um we'll talk about the see the ac this one's got ac here and a bracket here which sort of blocks your access a, a little bit more because of the AC and these AC pipes as well of course without this you've got a lot more room and access up there so there is the actual unit there if I just get the phone right up there that is the vaporizer it looks quite old and rusty so it's, n it's not going to be an easy one you can tell okay so what I've actually done is obviously got the blowtorch up there it's hard for me to record it 
put I've done it on loads of my other videos. Um, now what I'm doing is obviously just I'm turning the spanner. I've already cracked this loose off camera, so it is now loose. And what can happen with these is, like I said before, it can come loose, and then after a couple of turns, it gets tight again. If that happens, you know the thread is broken inside. And this one, so far, is just turning nicely. It takes quite a lot of strength to get the first turn, but once it's usually uncracked, it's then a little bit looser. It just takes a lot of strength to actually, you know, the angle, get, getting your hand on it and actually getting it to crack off. So obviously now what I'm doing is just, I'm turning the spanner clockwise and then you just get a, a, a grip on it like, like so. Okay, we have it out. This is the part. So that is the actual nozzle there that blocks up. You can see it's a bit smoky because obviously I've had the heat on it. Now when, when I get the heat on these and I'm getting them out, you can actually, if you're lucky, clear them out slightly. You can see that's got a little bit of an opening on it. Um, but what will happen is, depending on how blocked that is, your DPF could get to maybe 400 degrees. You know, it could get to 300 degrees. If it's only partially blocked, you might get to sort of 550, but you won't reach the optimal temperature that you need if it's even partially blocked. Right, so what we're gonna do, this one is quite old. We're gonna get a new one. You can see if we connect a gauge to that, it goes up. There's a lot of pressure in there, so that shouldn't hold any pressure. So basically, what that should look like when I'm doing that test is this. Let me just get it off. So this is what it should look like. No pressure. Okay, so that's the new vaporizer fitted up. Okay, now we're going to move on to cleaning the DPF because what we don't want to do is just put a vaporizer on, try and drive it down the road. I've tried it before in the past, the vehicle will just go back into limp mode. Um, or if you have a lot of soot in there. So if you have a lot of soot in your DPF and you just put a vaporizer in, reset to false, and take it for a drive, either two things will happen. You'll either go into limp mode or, worst case, worse, worse than that, you won't go into limp mode. The vehicle will try and do its regen and it will get, then give you an over temperature code because it will most likely go above a, t a thousand degrees and once that's happened you've likely then damaged your DPF so it's best to flush out the soot out of the DPF before we go any further okay so here we are we're back under the van just up here we have the DPF and here is the DPF pressure sensor I'm gonna disconnect that firstly disconnect the holes uh, clip whatever you call it we're gonna use one of these trim tools just to try and push this off now I might need my two hands for this look as you can see no one's this has been in and out of guards and nobody's had this off because it's you can tell it's been on there for years because they sort of weld themselves to the uh, to the metal the rubber mill welds itself on so you've got a little uh, adaption here on the end of my cone it's a piece of fuel holes basically and we'll just fit that on there now that's connected to the DPF now we just squeeze the trigger get all this in so this is a mixture of this fluid and 50% water compressor there at 130 psi okay we're back inside the vehicle 187,000 miles on this one we'll start the engine up okay now we need, do need to connect the scan tool again because we lost connection with the ignition off for so long so this one it hasn't turned out worst case scenario in my from from my opinion um, because of obviously I didn't have to do the tread chaser on the vaporizer uh, it came out relatively easy uh, easier than it could have been like a lot easier than it could have been um, we've now got a, a good vaporizer in there we've put the cleaning fluid in we're just going to hold the revs up and once we've got the pressure good enough we can reset the DPF and should all be good. Okay, we're gonna give it some revs. We will see some white vapor coming from the exhaust. And then here is the main part. We just keep an eye on the DPF pressure. Okay, 
okay now idle we have five millibars of pressure try and get it where the glare can't see there so even though the pressure has dropped these numbers usually don't come down because these are now locked in unless it, it's at regen temperature then you see these numbers sort of come down so what we'll have to do here in a minute is reset that reset the particle filter values it's a full job in the winter isn't it? successful then you've got another option here for the vaporizer priming so that takes a minute or so to prime that up now we can clear the fault codes go back in and read so we should now have no fault codes here that's it and now because of resetting the DPF and I've said it before in my videos you can't reset this unless you've actually cleaned the DPF because you can cause damage and that's at 0% so we just take this out on the test drive after test drive just confirm no fault codes have returned right that's it we're all finished he's ready to go home happy customer and I'll see you on our next video